as an investor, everyone's in it to pay less tax. Yep. No one likes paying tax to begin with. Um, you've got a win-win situation here where you can ring up, ask a few questions, we'll give you that no BS response to make sure that yes, it's gonna be feasible or no, it's not. We're here today with the next instalment of the Real Estate Lifecycle. We're lucky enough to have Anthony from MCG Quantity Surveyors to come down and talk to us about all things tax depreciation. Thanks for coming along. Thanks, Laura. What is tax depreciation? Uh, tax depreciation is one of the extra benefits a property investor can get a tax time. Okay. Um, doesn't sound like the world's sexiest topic, but uh, it's very important come tax time. So what it allows a property investor to do is claim a loss against their annual taxable income mm -hmm. in the form of wear and tear on the physical building itself, plus the fixtures and fittings within the, the property. Um, it's also the second largest deduction available to a property investor after the interest on their loan associated with um, having a, a property investment. So how does a tax depreciation report work? So essentially, uh, you engage someone like us, which is a quantity surveyor. Mm -hmm. uh, now our profession is essentially what we do is we're construction cost experts. Mm -hmm. And we go out, we conduct a full site inspection. So we measure up the, the floor plan of, of the property, um, look at all different flooring types like carpets, tiles, vinyl, that sort of thing. Um, we then also estimate what the original construction cost value was for that particular property, and then prepare a once-off report that lasts for 40 years the details to both the client and their accountant exactly how much they can claim every 12 months over that 40 year period in terms of depreciation. So 40 years is a long time, especially for property investors that don't always have it a property for that period of time. That's exactly really cool. right. Is this not something that your accountant would normally arrange? No, so accountants are great uh, bean counters as such, so mm -hmm. they're great with the, the final figures. In terms of estimating the construction costs, they're not qualified to do so. Yep. Um, so they reply, rely on us to prepare the report, and then once they've got the report in their hands, then they substitute the values in every 12 months. Perfect. And how is a tax creation report calculated? So that's basically what it is. Once we've been out and done the inspection, um, being construction cost experts, we've got data from, well, going many, many years back. Um, but essentially what we do is we work it out at today's value um, in terms of the construction cost. And then we apply what's called a building price indice from that moment in time that the property was actually constructed. And that will then tell us um, per square metre what it was worth to build back in that day. So it's a pretty in-depth report. I think it's something that I haven't really understood up until now. So it's really great to get this information. What are some do's and don'ts when it comes to your tax depreciation report? Yeah, look, do's and don'ts, um, there's not many, but the, the do's are certainly buy a newer property if you are looking to take advantage of depreciation. Mm -hmm. So the newer the property, the better the deductions are gonna be. Okay. Um, if you can buy something that is brand new, never lived in, um, that's when you're gonna get the maximum. So whether it's off the plan or a brand new house and land package. Uh, the don'ts are if you do buy a secondhand property, unfortunately you miss out on claims for things like carpets, blinds, kitchen appliances, hot water systems, those sorts of things. So uh, that's because there were some legislation changes back in May of 2017. Okay. The ATO and the government thought it was a great idea to kick investors in the guts and basically take away part of the depreciation factor. Um, so therefore, you basically can only claim on the building component. Now to qualify or for, the, for your property to qualify for that deduction, it's gotta be built after September 16, 1987. Okay. And then it depre depreciates, sorry, at 2.5% each year over that 40 years um, until it runs out. The other thing is you can also claim on prior renovations completed by previous owners. Mm -hmm. So if you buy a secondhand property and it's had a kitchen or bathroom update, uh, maybe an extension, something like that, or a swimming pool put in, um, you're entitled to claim on those deductions as well. And from our perspective, we can walk in and estimate those costs. Okay. Yeah. So is there a property that is too old to have a tax creation report on? Uh, not really. Um, so like I said before, the, the, the date of um, September 16, 1987 is pretty important for the building to qualify. Mm -hmm. um, if it was 
older than that, um, we basically have a, a foolproof system that is what we call the three triggers. Mm -hmm. So there's three different scenarios that if, you, if your property meets one of those, it's going to be worthwhile. Okay. If it doesn't meet either one of those three, then it's, it's certainly not going to be a feasible exercise. So the first one is it's a brand new property, always yep. guaranteed. Second one, it was built after that September 1687 date. And thirdly, if it was built before that date, we'd like to see at least $40,000 worth of renovations or improvements carried out, whether it's by the current owner or previous owners, um, to make it a feasible exercise to get a report done. So if it doesn't meet one of those three criteria, it's generally gonna be a no. Yep. Um, but we will certainly ask enough questions at the beginning to make sure that it's going to be a feasible exercise before we take any money from any client. Yep. Um, otherwise, we'll be you know, pretty straightforward and say, look, it's, it's not going to work out in this case and, and life goes on. And do you have to keep receipts or anything like that if you have done the renovations on a property? <laughs> look, receipts are one of those things. Um, we love them, but we hate them at the same time. Okay. So the last thing we want to see is a big shoebox full of receipts yep. from a renovation because it means we've got to spend time and effort going through and, and compiling all that information. Um, where it is a renovation that you know a lot of people might complete a reno not thinking they're going to be renting it out in a few years time so mm -hmm. they might throw receipts away that sort of thing we can work with approximate costs okay uh certainly if it's completed by previous owners we can estimate the works um whether it's costs and dates mm -hmm. so yeah look at the end of the day if you keep receipts great um, just put it into an Excel spreadsheet or something like that. Tends yeah, to make no shoe boxes. No shoe boxes. Um, yeah, they just become painful. When would be the best time? If I just am currently building a rent my investment property, it's due to settle in six weeks, when should I engage someone like you to do that work? Yeah, sure. So um, the, the best time is really any time, okay. but, but with a new build, we certainly can't do anything until you've had basically um, completion mm -hmm. and a handover. Um, because that's when the report will commence from, is okay. that, that handover date. Yeah. So look, with a new build, it's quite easy. We can work off your builder's contract, the plans and inclusions within that, so we don't need a physical inspection. Mm -hmm. It's only on established properties that you know, a purchaser might go out, buy the property closer to settlement. They might engage us to then um, tee up timeframes for us to be able to go out and inspect. And then once we've completed the inspection, it's seven to 10 working days to turn the report around. Yeah. Um, we generally find that a lot of investors, uh, they get to the end of the financial year and there's a mad rush to try and, yeah, a bit of a panic to, to try and get things organized before they go and see their accountants yeah. in July, August, whatever it may be. Um, the good news is as long as you order the report and our invoice for the report prior to June 30, you can then claim that fee in this current financial ah, so tax return. so even the report's tax deductible as yeah, well. 100%. Yeah, 100%. So the good news is um, through MMJ, we do offer a reduced rate for your clients yeah. as well. So um, typically our standard fee off the street is 650 plus GST, so yeah. 715. Your clients receive a reduced rate of $600 plus GST. Um, that being 100% tax deductible, generally speaking, you're gonna get at least $200 back in your pocket okay. with your return. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just, all you have to do is order the report prior to the end of financial year to be able to claim that fee yeah. in that current financial year's return. Yeah, and why would you say to an investor to invest in this report? So obviously, yes, we can claim the report itself back on tax depreciation, yep. but what would be the main reason that you're saying to them to get it done? Uh, look, the main reason and the simplest reason is for an investor to pay less tax. Okay. Okay, so generally speaking, uh, an investor comes about because they want to pay less tax in the first place. Yep. Um, it's generally guidance through their accountant or something like that, or they might just happen to fall into property investing. Um, but typically, the, the simplest form of explaining this to a landlord is to help them pay less tax. Okay. Um, now to give an example, a brand new house and land package, for example, might be a, a three or four bedroom home, could be somewhere between twelve and fifteen thousand dollars as a deduction in that first full year. Yeah. Now if you're paying tax at thirty two and a half percent, that's gonna mean you're looking at between four and five thousand dollars back in that first year's return um, on top of all your other deductions okay. as well. So yeah. it can certainly help you obtain greater cash flow yeah. while you've got the property as an investment property in the early days. And then towards the end of it, um, you know, obviously things start to fizzle out, but the building itself will last you for 40 years in terms of, of an overall deduction. Yeah. Yeah. What if in 10 years time, I actually do some more renovations? Do yeah. I need to get a new report or how does that work in regards to for your accounting? Yeah, so any improvements that are down the track, um, <clears throat> You might have to replace a hot water system or an air mm -hmm. conditioner might cark it. 
You can simply replace like for like and um, we can update the report for you at no cost. Okay. If it is a larger um, improvement, such as a, a new bathroom or a new kitchen, something like that, um, all we need is the relevant costs and uh, mm -hmm. associated works, that sort of thing, and we can update the report in future. Yep. Um, there may be a small fee involved, yep. but we can generally update that report to reflect those changes. So, what do you say, for instance, our one of our landlords were a bit unsure if it was actually worth them getting this report. Are they able to ring and have a chat to anyone to get a better understanding? Yeah, they sure can. So basically, um, at any time, they can call our office. Yep. Um, and basically, we'll have a chat with them about their particular scenario, their property, how long they've owned it, how old the property may be, all that sort of thing. And, and we'll go through and ascertain, obviously, the feasibility of it. Um, but we can also give them some indicative figures in terms of what sort of deductions might be available okay. as well. And that's all complimentary. Yep. So at any stage, they can ring up, send an email, whatever it may be, and we'll be more than happy to yeah, have a chat with them about their particular scenario. Okay, so they don't have to actually lock themselves into a report before finding out all the information they need to know. No, not at all. No, yeah. no it's all complimentary and yeah, we're there to guide people. Yep. Um, we're all about education and making sure they yep. know what they need to know. Yep. Um, and you know, we're not we're not one to take their money and run. Um, we're always there to help them out and make sure they're getting the most out of it. Perfect. So thanks Anthony for having a chat with us today. Um, I think I've learned a lot about tax creation that I didn't understand before. The fact that it lasted for 40 years, um, that the report itself is completely tax deductible and claimable straight away and you did it this year. Um, I really appreciate you coming down. If you had one thing to wrap it all up, what would be your, your advice to our investors? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, um, as an investor, everyone's in it to pay less tax. Yep. No one likes paying tax to begin with. Um, you've got a win-win situation here where you can ring up, ask a few questions. We'll give you that no BS response to make sure that, yes, it's going to be feasible or no, it's not. And if we don't go out to do what we've said we'd do, and that's um, basically where our guarantee comes into it as well. So okay. we aim to find at least double our fee worth of deductions in that first full 12 months. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there's no charge for the service. Okay. Um, so essentially, the client can walk away. We've been out, we've inspected the property. We haven't been able to find what we thought we could. Um, they can cut ties, no cost to them. Or we go out, we find them a bucket load of deductions. Um, and then that way at tax time, they get some extra money back in their pocket. So yeah, essentially it's just helping them pay less tax uh, and they're also treated like an extension of your own business when dealing with MCG. So yep. yeah, we, um, we aim to please. Thanks for educating us. It's been great speaking right. to you today. Yeah, thanks Laura. Thank you. That's okay. I really appreciate you coming down.